Hey everyone, Grant Alexander here. Welcome back to the channel. If you're like me and you have a vintage trailer that came with a vintage fridge, it's probably about time that that vintage fridge gets replaced. Today I'm going to show you how I'm replacing mine with this brand new one from Smad Appliances. Stay tuned and I'll show you how I did it. It all starts with an unboxing. The fridge came packaged in a standard box with styrofoam protecting all sides. Not shown is that the top had additional plywood protection. And now the reveal. Inside of the fridge contained the propane regulator that I won't be using and a single wire shelf and two plastic door shelves. So the fridge comes with a 12 volt car adapter and because I'm going to be permanently installing it in my trailer, I'm not going to be using this. But I do need to attach it into this 12 volt spot, so I'll remove these screws. And now you can see that the supplied goes white and black. That's pretty easy. Black goes into black, white goes into white. Just gotta get a little screwdriver in there. All right, a little screwdriver. Make sure it's good and tight. Always good to test. Looks good. Now let's put the cover back on. The fridge comes with these cable clips where a bunch of the wiring and propane lines go through, but the 12 volt and AC lines are not included in there, so I'm going to replace them with slightly bigger cable clips. I don't need this plug either, as I will be hardwiring AC to the fridge as well. When you're dealing with propane, you gotta make sure that you turn the propane off, and I go the extra mile and undo the propane to make sure that no one could turn on by accident. To remove the old fridge, I first disconnected all of the electrical and the propane line. After removing the bolts to hold the fridge in place, I was able to slide it out of the cabinet. I'm going to be reusing this bracket and modifying it to work with the new fridge. I'm drilling new holes that will line up with the holes in the SMAD fridge. Now I'm going to take off the adjustable feet on the back and head to the store. I need to find nuts and bolts to attach the bracket to the fridge. These ones are M8 by 1.25. To attach the bracket to the fridge, I'm using a bolt, a washer, and then two nuts. This will allow me to have an adjustable height for the bracket, and I can tighten the nuts in place to make sure they don't move while I'm traveling. Now we are getting to the fun part, installing the new fridge. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze getting it through the door and into place. I had to drill new mounting points to the trailer. Then I installed some stainless bolts, washers and lock nuts to ensure it doesn't move while I'm traveling. So I'm just going to interrupt the program here to give you a little safety tip about running copper tubing. 
So you might go to your local big box store and see some 3 8 tubing and think, well, that's going to work. And it might, but it's not rated for gas. So if you look down there, it's hard to see. I'll probably take a picture and throw it in there, but it is uh, really thin walled copper tubing. Stuff that I got at the store was only rated to do uh, water and air. This stuff here, I had to go to another store to get it, is actually a little bit thicker and the walls are thicker and this stuff is actually rated to run gas. And that's a really important part. Uh, if you're doing propane, like we are here, then you need this stuff. You can't use the stuff rated for water. I want to say, if you're not comfortable doing this on your own, this is not the type of DIY that you risk it uh, because propane is explosive. So be careful. The propane lines are connected using a flare fitting. This is a specialized tool that you likely won't have in your average DIY kit, but you should be able to find it at most local hardware stores. To make the flare end, you first put the fitting on, then clamp the flaring bar in place, then you can tighten down the flaring adapter. The tool I have is designed so that you can't over tighten it and this is a nice feature to have. After it's been tightened all the way down, you just remove the yoke assembly, the flaring bar, and you have a nice cone-shaped flare like this. Before trying to install this line, I cut it to approximate length using a standard pipe cutter. This will make it a lot easier to deal with in the next step. I had to shove the line down into the hole and then back up to where the connection is at the top of the fridge. I added some sheathing to prevent chafing. This has turned out to be the most frustrating part of this entire thing. Because I'm trying to connect the propane line up into here, and it's about right here. Of course, I can't get there because of this vent. And so I'm reaching my hand up and trying to get it. You got to get it perfectly on there to get it started. And it's not working out really well. Now that I've got it started, I'm gonna finish it off with this wrench. Now that we have it installed at the top, I can cut it to the proper length. I couldn't get my bending tool into this tight spot, so I decided to just use my hands while being careful not to kink the line. Yes, this, very important. Put this on first, then, then you can go with this. With the tube cut to the right length and bent into place, I can repeat the steps for adding a flare to the end of the line, and then tighten it using a wrench. Now that I've finished the installation of the propane, I'm gonna be turning it on and using this bottle of soapy water. Don't look at the label, trust me, I filled it with soapy water. And I'm going to be spraying it on the connections and seeing if there's any bubbles that come out. If there's bubbles that come out, it means there's a propane leak and then you need to fix the connection. No bubbles is a good sign. As I mentioned earlier, I am hardwiring this fridge into my trailer. To make all the connections, I'm using simple crimp connectors with heat shrink tubing. Last but not least, I added a zip tie to hold all the wires together. Now it's time to see if it works. Yay, I did it! I've just plugged it in and I'm gonna have this little uh, thermo probe thing um, and I'm gonna put this on the inside it works all right put it on the inside oh it's even got a light I didn't know it had a light that's exciting Let's see we'll come back in uh, every hour maybe check on it Ooh, it's all right 20 degrees in there that's pretty good in one hour I'm gonna come back and check so it's been about four and a half hours and we are at the optimum cooling temperature of three degrees Celsius. I think that's pretty impressive that it went from off to fully cool in that period of time. So that's a big thumbs up for me. If you recall when I unboxed the fridge, it only comes with one shelf and I'm gonna fix that.
I found some old wire shelving and cut a piece to size. To add some protection, I'm covering it with Plasti Dip. Got the fridge installed, but now we're up in a problem that the fridge isn't the exact same size as the old one. There's lots of different ways that you can go about fixing this. What I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut up some wood and then I'm going to paint it white and slide it in there. And it's, it's just trying to match the cabinet color instead of trying to match the wood tones. That'll give this a little bit of white gap between underneath the uh, drawer here and make it look a little bit nicer. You know, depending on your fridge, you might want to do something a little different. I got my apprentice in. He's really good at measuring and helping to make sure everything comes out perfect. 24 and a half. This is going to be a pretty simple frame. I'm just gonna be butt jointing everything together and holding it with screws. As you can see, my apprentice likes to have fun spinning around on the stool instead of actually helping, but this keeps him out of trouble. With the frame built and painted, I can slide it into place on top of the fridge and then screw it into place using countersink screws. Not shown on camera, I added little plastic caps that fit into the screw head and make it a nice clean look. And now for the important question on everyone's mind, how many beers can I fit in this? Let's start here, let's just make sure. Oh no! That's a start off as a disappointment. You can't have a full king can this way. It will hit the door. So that's frustrating. I guess I'll put the Well, that is a very frustrating part about this fridge. It is not quite as deep as my old fridge. These drawers are in the way. inspiration struck and I decided I don't need shelves not if I can get lots of beer in here two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen twenty twenty four there's definitely room from at least a twenty four of king cans in here door closes we're good even room for a bottle of water for the morning. I wanted to show how easy it is to light the propane fridge. Just turn the gas knob to light and hold it down. Then press the spark button and you will hear it sparking. Once it's lit, the flame sensor will move. Hold the gas knob until it's lit for 15 to 30 seconds and then it's ready to go. This little flame sensor is real nice so you can really tell whether or not the fridge is on. This is so much nicer than my old fridge, which required me to go outside and light it from the access panel. And don't forget to turn the knob to all the way open. So the thing everyone's been waiting for, the discount code, if you go to the link below and use the code SMADGRANT, you can get $10 off your order from SMAD Appliances. That's available for all the Americans out there. If you're one of my Canadian friends, you gotta go to Amazon. Right now it's out of stock as I'm posting this video, but I've been told it's coming in stock soon. So go check that out. Now I wanna go over some of the features I like about this fridge and some of the features I don't like about this fridge. Obviously, one of the things that I found as a negative is that it only came with one shelf. I've already mentioned that to the folks over at SMAD and uh, they're taking my uh, suggestion into consideration. It's got a magnetic front like a regular fridge. My old fridge had a wood door, so this is much nicer. I can put up some artwork that my son drew while he was uh, camping and I've got some fun magnets door shelves they're really deep they're way too deep these stick out too far and interfere with placing food in the fridge the other fridge i had the dometic it was uh they were pretty small which is like they were just big enough for these little tiny things but that made it so that you could put more stuff into the fridge part so i might be designing a new door shelf uh probably 3d printing it follow me on instagram and i'll probably document it there it is silent that's one of the wonderful things about a three-way uh fridge like this the absorption fridge if you compare that to a compressor fridge like a normal mini bar fridge or the fridge in your house if you're camping in the middle of nowhere and there's no other noises around 
you can hear a compressor fridge and you cannot hear these absorption fridges. So we just came back from a week camping at a, one of the provincial parks near my place. And I want to say the fridge performed really well. It was on AC the whole time. We actually had to turn it down because uh, when we got there, it was actually a little bit too cold and we had frozen some of the stuff that was in there. One of the last things I want to mention that I found really frustrating about this fridge is it doesn't have a lock. All the other RV fridges that I've seen have come with like a, even just a little simple lock. Right now I put on a child protecting lock. I'll be making something to make this lock because if you don't lock it, all your food falls on the floor while you're traveling and that's not any fun. Another thing that I really like is how easy it is to operate this. This The switch here turns from 12 volts gas to AC. It's got the spark uh, piezo lighter for uh, lighting the gas and the gas valves over here. It's super easy. It also has the flame sensor. This just makes it so much easier. I can always just tell exactly what's going on with the fridge, where the setting is from inside the camper while I'm looking at the fridge. It just makes things so much nicer than going outside. Again, I wanna say thank you to SMAD for sponsoring the video. And until next time, cheers and have a great day.